sure you've never done this before? Well, all I can say is one of your ancestors must have been a master potter. We still have no firm evidence that Chalky is involved. I believe we have now, sir. Matthew's picture, drawn last year. Albertine's model, made two days ago, without ever seeing Matthew's picture. If you stay, you will bring great danger to Albertine and to yourself. I'm sorry. You must leave here. Go away. Please, Chucky. Goodbye, Matthew. on so well together. I really can't understand it. But they had a quarrel. Well, that's what Matthew told me. He wouldn't say what about, though. I wondered if you'd notice anything. No. It's such a shame. Whatever it is, it must have really upset Matthew. He smashed Albertine's model to smithereens. Well, which model was that? You know, that marvelous arrangement of geometrical shapes she made. Now, why would he do a thing like that? Uh, shall I try to find out for you? Would you? I'd be so grateful. I know so little about boys of that age. Oh, darling, what's that? You don't have to go, you know. Yes, I do. I wish you'd tell me what's happened. I might be able to help. You couldn't. Nobody can. It can't be that bad, surely. I won't tell anyone else, I promise. Well, if you really must. But I'm very disappointed in you. I thought you were made of sterner stuff. Why don't you give it another couple of days? It's not that long till your mum and dad get back. I'm sorry, Aunt Sissy, I can't. Very well. I'll call Colin's parents. What's their name? Froom. Froom. Well, if it's all right with them, Luke can drive you over there this morning. But there's one thing you've got to do first. What's that? You've got to go and see Albertine and tell her what you did to her model last night and why. No! She won't listen. I'm not going to have you running away. I insist you apologize. I know it's difficult, but if you won't do that, I won't call Mr. and Mrs. Froom. Well? All right. I'll try.
Oh, Mr. Meyer, my name is Dr. Deacon. I spoke on the phone. Hi, Mr. Meyer. Uh, I want to thank you for agreeing to see me at such short notice. I'm glad. I don't make a habit of talking to so-called experts, Doctor. You'd have to fight as hard for your ideas as I have. Right, right. I tell you, if the authorities had had their petty-minded little way, I'd have been in jail. For your ideas? Exactly. Right, Albertine? They'd have taken Albertine away from me. She'd sent her to some worse than useless school where they'd have systematically destroyed her natural gifts with their third-rate teaching methods. Chalky. Chalky. Right, let's listen to what Deacon's got to say. It's you he's come to talk about. Yes, of course. Well, as I said on the telephone, Mr. Meyer, I am a psychologist. My colleague, Sir William Thorpe, is one of the most eminent psychologists this side of the Atlantic. Is he indeed? Yes, he is. Uh, he would have come himself, except that he's away in the States at the moment, conducting a series of postgraduate seminars at the California Institute of Technology and Harvard. So, what do you want with us? So William and I are concerned with pushing back the frontiers of learning and the development of higher intelligence. We have a special interest in researching the nature of genius, especially in young people, and the way in which their natural gifts are fostered through proper teaching. Then you've come to the right place. We know all about that, don't we, Albertine? I believe you do, Mr. Meyer. That's exactly why I've come to see you. Yes? I would like to make a study of Albertine here to assess the true level of her intelligence and the way in which her potential is being realized through your individual guidance. Aunt Sissy! What's happened now? Nothing, nothing's happened. Did you see Albertine? Not to speak to her, they've got a visitor. I see, you know what I said. I've changed my mind. Can I stay here? What? I'm sorry. About the model, I can't explain. I am sorry. Truly, I am. Please, can I stay? It's not too late, is it? No, of course it isn't, if you really want to. I do. I must. Well, then it's all right, then. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Susie. Thank you. you better go and unpack again. Albertine. Albertine. Chocky, why don't you come? Albertine! Yes, I congratulate you. Oh, and you, young lady. Of course, most of this is way above my head, but I can appreciate the effort. Quite remarkable. You approve then? Of course. Mr. Meyer, if you will allow me to carry out my tests on Albertine. Tests? Oh, they're perfectly harmless, I assure what you. What sort of tests? Oh, nothing physical, I give you my word. Purely my own form of intelligence testing. I can't publish anything without carrying out tests, but I'm sure they will confirm your results. You want to publish? Of course. Scientific and education world must know. Albertine, what do you think? I wouldn't mind. Of course you wouldn't mind. And there may be some more uh, tangible benefits as well. How's that? Well, among our other activities, Sir William and I advise some of the world's biggest and most important corporations. Well, what's that got to do with us? Well, we may be able to arrange for one of them to sponsor your daughter through university. I know how expensive that can be. Well, Albertine has a scholarship. Oh, yes, I know, but how far will that go these days? But with a sponsorship, neither of you need worry about money at all while Albertine is studying. Well, when would you want to start your research? I mean, there isn't that long before the beginning of term. Right. And we wouldn't want anything to interfere with that, would we? Yes, you're right. The sooner we start, the better. It'll have to be carried out at my clinic, of course. Scientific tests should be carried out under controlled conditions. Oh, naturally. When? Well, I suppose we could make a start tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Meyer, Albertine, and thank you. Until tomorrow. Bye, Doctor. If you uh, take the track right down to the end, turn left, you'll be on the main road. Thank you. Ow. 
Albertine! Albertine! What are you doing here? I have to talk to you. It's important. If it's more about your stupid voices and chocolate... I can't tell you here. Albertine, where are you? I've got to go. I'll wait for you in the mill. Please come. It's very important. Albertine! All right. That man. What man? The one who was at your house. Who is he? Why? Matthew, you keep acting very strangely. What's the matter with you? I know it must seem funny, but it isn't. I promise you. Tell me, please. If you must know, he's a very famous doctor from London. From Harley Street? Yes. His name's Dr. Deacon. A psychiatrist. A mind doctor? Yes. He's interested in geniuses. He wants me to do some tests for him. You mustn't go. It's a trick. Don't be so silly. How do you know? Because I know who he is and what he's really after. How could you? I do. They kidnapped me last year. They wanted to find out how much I knew. That really is silly. Why would they want to do a thing like that? Because of Chucky. Oh, no, not that again. I'm going. Alpine, please. You've got to believe me. You're in terrible danger. It's all my fault. If only. I know. Come back to Aunt Sissy's with me. There's something there I want to show you. It's my model. Yes. Why did you make a drawing of my model? I didn't. I drew this last year. Or rather, Chucky did. It's a picture of her home. Where is it? I don't know. She couldn't explain exactly. All I know is, it's another planet. A long, long way away. You mean, this Chucky is something from outer space? Yes. She wants to help us. But how did she get here? It's only her mind that's here. Because mind has no mass, it takes no time to travel. Do you understand? Yes, that's very clever. But I still don't understand what she wants. Or why you say I'm in great danger. She wants to teach us how to use cosmic power. She was going to use me to do it, but they found out. They kidnapped me. Who's they? Sir William Thorpe and his business friends. They want to stop it because cosmic energy would be free and so they'd lose all their money. Sir William Thorpe? Dr Deacon mentioned that name. He said they were partners. What are we going to do? I don't know. My dad would know. He's away. He knows all about Chucky. Isn't there anybody else? No. Only Dr. Landis. But I don't know whose side he's on. But I'm supposed to be seeing Dr. Deacon tomorrow morning. Chucky. Chucky, what are we going to do? Please. Help us. Chucky. Chucky! Chucky. Albertine, do not be afraid. Chucky, I'm sorry. It is not your fault, Matthew. I did not realize that when I was in close contact with anyone, I opened up channels of telepathic communication. That is why you picked up thoughts and pictures from Albertine, even before you came here. You mean all those pictures of the windmill? Yes, Matthew. But why didn't I know about you? After what happened to Matthew last year, I thought that if my other children did not know about me, they could not tell anyone, and they would be safe. Your other children? Are there more of us? The other pictures. What other pictures? Pictures of New York, Sydney, Moscow, places like that. They kept coming into my mind. Yes, Matthew. Those are my other children. Can we communicate with them? You could, but it would be better if you did not try. Then who's going to help us? Matthew's father is the only one who could help, if he were here. So until he gets back, we must stop Albertine going to London tomorrow. 
She must not go. Mr. Mayor. Where is she? What's he done with her? I really don't know what you're talking about. My daughter, of course, Albertine. I'm not going to stand on the doorstep like this. You better come inside. Now then, what's this all about? Is Albertine here? No, of course she isn't. Why should she be? She's gone. Run away. Albertine? Surely not. What your nephew is doing, he's a disruptive influence. I should never have allowed Nonsense. Him. If anything, Matthew's the one who's been upset by your daughter. Anyway, what makes you think she's run away? I got up this morning and she'd gone. She left a note. Does it say anything about Matthew in it? No. Well then, may I see it? Dear Daddy, I'm going away for a few days. I'll explain everything when I see you. Till then, don't worry, I'm all right. Don't I'll worry. Be well, she's probably gone to stay with a friend. She hasn't got any friends. She doesn't know anybody. Except Matthew. Exactly. Where is he? Well, he's not up yet. He's... Oh, my goodness, you don't think... Wait there while I go and see. Oh, dear. Oh, no. He's not there. You see? He's abducted her. Wait a minute. Perhaps Luke's seen him. Sissy. Hello, Mr. Mayor. You weren't in your bedroom. No, I thought I cleaned hop tea out. Give him some food before breakfast. Luke's been helping me. Have you seen Albertine? What, this morning? No, it's too early. Have you any idea where she might be? No. There's something wrong. She's gone missing. She's done what? She's disappeared, sir. Sometime during the night. Oh, you knucklehead. Does she know about us? I don't think so. The mayor certainly doesn't. He's worried sick. Has he called the police? Uh, not yet. She left a note saying not to worry, that she was all right. The mayor doesn't like the authorities. He won't call them except as a last resort. Oh, good, good. Now, oh, what about the boy? Oh, he's still here, sir. Well, that's something at least. But, Luke, I want that girl found. Do you understand? Find her. Just like camping. Daddy and I used to go every summer, so I know all about it. Good. Bought you a drink and some biscuits. Thanks. You've got to be careful nobody notices you bringing things. It's all right. I think they're for me. You sure nobody followed you? Yes. You know, I'm quite enjoying this. It's just like an adventure. It's more serious than that. Yes, I know. As long as no one suspects anything, we'll be all right. They'll never find this place. My dad will be back soon. I wish we could tell my dad. So do I. I hope he isn't too worried. I hate having to tell lies. If only there was somebody we could talk to who'd believe us. That's very good. Thanks. You've really come on these last few days, haven't you? You think so? Yeah. Your girlfriend was very promising too. Albertine? She's not my girlfriend. Well, she's a girl and she's a friend. Any news? No. Strange business, that. Where do you think she's gone? Do you miss seeing her? A bit, yes. Yeah, I bet you do. Nice girl. Very. There are not many friends, I understand. I don't know. Did you patch up that quarrel you had with her? What quarrel? 
I thought you and she had a quarrel before she disappeared. All oh, that. That was nothing. Just silly, really. But you smashed up her model. Yes. Sorry about that, but I had to. Did you? And why is that? Oh, no particular reason. I see. Hey, listen, Matthew. If there's any advice, any help, anything. Thanks. Is there anything? You know, you can trust me. Team, what is it? Thank you. 